Hey everybody, Derek Brown here with another Insider Sax Stuff episode where I talk all things the saxophone life. And if you're interested in seeing any of my other videos on my Facebook page, I have a series about surviving in the music industry. On my Instagram page, I have a thing called Staying Sane on Tour. And, uh, of course, I have my Beatbox Sax Tutorials Volume 2. And these are all while I'm on my nine-month 50-50 tour, traveling around the U.S. in my RV here. And today I want to talk about something that has been a constant source of frustration for me. Um, but I think I'm starting to get it figured out. And I want to share uh, a bit of what I've learned. And that's the idea of ways to reduce the volume of your practicing. Um, some of you, this may never be an issue if you always live in your own house or you have a great practice room and you can just play as loud as you want all the time. But a lot of us, whether we are on the road in an RV camp or we are staying in hotels with other guests around us or we just live in an apartment and there's people above or on the sides or below us, we can't always practice the way that we should. Now, it's one thing if you're practicing for 10 minutes or you're just practicing quietly. However, a lot of us that are really serious about music, we know that, of course, the only way we're going to get better is just by practicing a lot. And when we do that, we need to be comfortable. You need to have a peace of mind that you're not bar bothering anybody. And another thing is we got to avoid this thing I call the small room syndrome. And that's the idea of when we practice in a small room, we play as if we're in a small room. Makes sense. We play quieter because we don't need to project as much. However, if you do that for day after day, hour after hour, you get into a large auditorium or you're playing with a band with a lot of musicians or playing in the, like a jazz combo with a loud drummer, you have to really push loud and project. And if you're always practicing playing softly, and then all of a sudden you have to now really project, you're going to all of a sudden, everything's going to be out of whack. Um, all that muscle memory of good diaphragm and breathing support is going to be out the window and it's going to be so uncomfortable. And it's just, it's just different playing louder than playing softer on the saxophone. Uh, now, if we were only so lucky as these electronic instruments like guitars or keyboards where they just have a volume knob or even a brass instrument where all the sound comes out of one place, like on a trumpet, all the sound comes out of that one bell. They can stick on a practice mute and all the sound will be muted. Yes, the pressure will be different and some people like those more than others, but it is possible to greatly reduce that sound. Now on saxophone, yes, we have this big bell. However, we have all these little tone holes with the keys and the sound is not just coming out of the bell, but all these notes. And so the only way to really reduce the sound drastically is covering the whole thing. Now, uh, we don't all have the means to do that, uh, but let me talk about some different ways that I have found for muting the saxophone, especially when I'm on the road. Um, first of all, I did mention the bell. Yes, the majority of the sound does come out of that bell. It matters which way we aim. You know, if you're playing, aiming a different way, it's going to be quieter for that back way. That's one little thing to think about. Um, or, of course, playing in a different room. This is pretty obvious. Uh, in this RV, we have a bathroom. This can be my practice room, whereas this is my sound here. Here it is in this room. Okay, obvious way to do it. Um, now, what about it? you don't have a different room to go to? Uh, let's try to cut that bell. Now, they do sell these actual, I've seen, saxophone mutes. I've actually purchased a couple that, uh, that cover your bell. Now the thing is, are, do you want to spend that money to reduce really only about 10% of the sound, or you can use what you've got. I sometimes use t-shirts, maybe folded once, so here's my sound this way. With a t-shirt, covering the bell. It cuts it a little bit, like I said, 10%. The expensive kinds aren't going to do much more because sound has to come out of here and some sound has to come out of the bell. Uh, the other problem with the t-shirt and the, these sax mutes on the market is, listen what happens as I go low. B flats are impossible, Bs are tough, low Cs and higher are okay. So you can't really do the whole range of the horn. If you know me, I like playing bass lines, slap tongue and bass lines down on the, on the low end of the horn, so I can't cover up my bell like that for effective practice. And if you want to take this a step farther, you can uh, not only put the t-shirt over, 
But you can also drape a blanket over the entire saxophone. Sometimes this is easier to do when it's when you're seated. Um, but you can drape it over the whole thing and try to wrap it around the saxophone so that it's going to mute more of the sound escaping the keys as well. So it cuts it a little bit. Now I could put more blankets. I could just keep loading this stuff up. Um, however, if you put too much on here, that's going to affect your octave key. This neck needs to, of course, be able to function correctly. Uh, but that's another way to add a little bit more dampening if you need to. Another way is I mentioned, you know, sound comes in this in this angle. If you have access to something like a closet, or you could even hang up towels and play into that, that's going to deaden the sound. Less sound's going to be bouncing around. So if I play facing this little convenient closet I have here, listen to the sound difference. And the further you go into the closet, the more you can surround yourself by that sound deadening clothing, the better it's going to be. And there we go. Now sometimes in hotel rooms, I will even open up the little vestibule or closet and I'll drape a giant comforter over the top and around my back. Yes, it looks absolutely ridiculous. But if there are times where I just absolutely need to practice and I can't do it softly, I've got to work on my performance stuff, that's what I'll do. And that's, you got to do what you got to do. I've also, uh, I remember three months I was living in a, uh, an apartment in Germany and I had to, I had this, they had this vestibule about this big and I actually, just because I needed to practice multiple hours every day, I actually set it up with a chair in there, all these clothing, uh, towels on the sides. I put a little fan in there because it was so hot. I couldn't see the light of day. It was pitch black, but it worked for me. And you got to do what you got to do. Lastly is this idea of these kind of full body sax mutes. And you'll see different types made a lot of times of plastic, kind of a hard case. Those will work because, yes, it's covering the whole saxophone. You have little holes for the hand. However, a big thing for me is portability. Um, won't fit in your in your suitcase. Um, I have found this sax mute, which is made by uh, a company in Moscow, Russia, um, called Bird Sax Shop or Bird Sax Boutique, and they make this cloth mute that can actually fold up. It can actually fold up into your large suitcase. And to do this, this is like those other mutes, those kind of plastic outside mutes. I'm going to stick this in here. Zip it up so that the only holes are for your hands and for the neck. Now it's not going to cut the sound 100%. I would say maybe 50% it cuts it, but that's still pretty good. So There it is. Now another thing is notice there's no strap, and that's because the saxophone needs room in the body so that it doesn't cut off certain notes. And so, uh, so you got to find some place to balance it, or if you sit on a chair and then this is on your bed and whatnot. The last thing is you can now combine some of these things. Put a t-shirt over the bell, play with this inside of the bathroom. That's going to be the ultimate thing. Yes, there's nothing that's going to really cut that sound super drastically on the sax, but hopefully something I've said here has sparked some idea so that you can practice with more peace of mind and more often. And just one note uh, that hearing the uh, examples of these various muting techniques you, you as uh, a listener on YouTube are not going to hear quite as drastic of a volume reduction as you would if you were in person here, just because our natural ears uh, have a much higher frequency range, and the higher frequencies that these things are cutting would be more noticeable to the actual naked ear, just so you know. So, hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you on another one of my videos. Take care. <laughs> Down, 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 down